Now then, look at this. Glorious sunshine. This is a rarity on my adventures of recent. But just look at that big shiny white thing in the sky there. Pouring down onto us. What a fantastic day. And uh, we are currently in the Lake District, heading up to the summit of the Old Man of Coniston. 802 metres, maybe it is. Uh, and it's the tallest mountain in this sort of set of fells, I think. <laughs> but on the way up, it's great because you're taking the, uh, let me take them off so I can see you. You're taking the old mine, which is um, a mine that basically has been uh, active until probably 40 or 50 years ago for 800 years. 800 years, that's just crazy. That's when people were like, humans, the tallest human at that point was about, I think three foot tall. That's a long time ago. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna uh, stop at the town, mess about, have a play with the drone, show you how beautiful this area is, get to the top, open a beer, and just take it all in. And I'll hopefully show you uh, a bit of the mine, the old mine and some of the uh, sort of mining shafts and everything on the way. So anyway, let's get up there with that mutt. This is literally my office. <laughs> Amazing that. So here we are, some of the old workings for this mine. And it is a, a load of old metal work. This is part of the old workings of this mine. Still some of the buildings are semi-standing. <laughs> some bright uh, gubbins that go into these uh, old mining sort of facilities. I mean, look at that thing there. I bet you can't guess what that's for. <laughs> yeah, they used to use that to uh, fire the workers back down the mountain to go to bed on a night. True. <laughs> some uh, hellish size of things to get up here. You know, all these sort of steels and big timbers and all the uh, metal work involved, but oh, it's just such a tranquil place. I mean, imagine working here for years of your life. You know, looking back down to the lake down there and then just got all the mountains all the way around. Look at that. What a place. Give it choice of a job. I'd be here. I won't be in office actually. <laughs> I think I want to be outside, but yeah, just amazing, isn't it?
Well, there's all these little old shafts everywhere. Just beautiful uh, little arches there. Got a beautiful dog up there. Just waiting for me. It's a bit chilly, sort of in shade. I put a top on, but now I start walking again. I'm getting warm. Anyway, let's uh, head up here. Because there is a bit of a shaft at this point that you can walk in. It's called, I can see it from here, Fisher Bank. Fisher Bank, whatever that is. Tell you what, just walk into the entrance of this and the cold air, it is, I bet it's like eight degrees colder walking here. Definitely, this though, what a cave. Let's have a look in. You can see this though up here. There's a section missing, and there it is. <laughs> a massive chunk, it's uh, fallen down from that ceiling. I don't think it'll be doing it in the next 10 minutes anyway. <laughs> Adding more to this. Here you go in blue, come on. Let's go explore. Good lad, come on. Let's carry on a bit further then. Oh, it's cold in here. What a difference. It's just silent as well. It's really nice. Little platform just down here, which uh, potentially you could bivy camp on that. Look at the view, absolutely awesome. Well, I can't see much further there. Stan, dog's gone up there, so there must be something. So let me get a head torch out and we'll go have a quick look, eh? Right, let's go see how far back this goes. Change that, there we go. Oh, it's not that big. I was expecting it to go back miles, this thing. Boring. Boring, boring, but... I mean, look. It's a fair uh, place, like. Here we are back out again. God, it's warm out here compared. It really is. Right, on to the next part. Look at this though. Got these massive sort of wires basically. Probably for hauling up and down some massive amounts of material. Probably in carts. I did have a little sort of railway systems up here in the mines to bring all the stone out the slate. Let's tell you what this place is. Epic scale, it really is. Just uh, coming up now to the town. Halfway up, I'd say. But look at this. What a place.
Got a couple of other guys down here who are well camping tonight. And it's the uh, first time for one of them. What a place to do it and what a, a weather window to do it in. Well, I am here alone now, and I'll tell you what, it's not often you get a place like this to yourself. And it's just peaceful, it really is. We've got a few sort of dark clouds coming in actually. I mean, if we look over here, you can still see the blue sky, but the dark just hovering over the top of that. What a place though. Just, oh, it's just lovely. I mean, all this massive sort of rock formation on that side, it just feels like it's sort of, falling over onto you and do you know what the last time I was here I was with Nicola and we came for a sort of a, a run up up to top and along the top and back down and the weather was honestly unbelievable the wind I mean this place was just basically all the water was being picked up off this uh, tarn and thrown into the air and just swirling round unbelievable it was so windy anyway we made it to the summit uh, Nicola Nelly got killed by a flying bottle uh, which came out of someone's bag and it sort of went about 40 yards and smacked her. Um, she tried to sort of uh, sit on the uh, summit um, uh, cairn, whatever you call it, the trig point, and was just literally getting blown off. And then from that point on, we're running right along the top. We do like 30 yards and pretty much have to just sort of sit down and then let the wind pass and then just do another little bit. We could barely stand up. It was actually quite an incredible day that. And the worst thing about that there for me was I filmed a lot and made a re it would have been a really good video and um, when I sort of took the uh, SIM card thing, whatever you call it, the little memory card out of the uh, GoPro, it snapped. So all that data and data from something else as well, just all gone. So I was a bit gutted because it was pretty spectacular that day. Anyway, let us continue up and get ourselves up to the summit before it gets dark because it is actually getting on a bit and it's still a fair climb up there. Whew. But I tell you what, it's dropping cold again. <laughs> Stand off. I'm not scared of you sheepy. Behind blue. That behind. Good boy. Yeah, this last section, you climb fast. <laughs> it is steep. So yeah, this is the hard bit. And potentially a couple of spots down there to camp, but I don't know. I've not really seen anything that's a really good spot. But you don't get the uh, this amazing sunset that we're going to get. <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. It might do. Living hope and all that. Well, nothing too extreme, but a steep walk with a bit of technical ground. I'll tell you what, now we're coming towards the summit. I mean, look, it just opens up. See in the distance the sea. Yeah, what a place. 
and there's still a bit of sunlight over there. So I am hoping to get a bit of colour in that sky. Yeah, it's funny, is it, in it? How we all just sort of chase that little bit of colour. Nearly there. And just see the summit cairn. What a place though. I'm just looking back down here to the town. You know, it's only, I don't know, 25 minutes ago I was down there. But you can see it's a hell of a long way down and winding up this snake-like path. But here we are. At the summit. 800 and 2 metres ish. <sighs> yes. This is it. Beautiful, eh? And no one else around. We've just got the sun trying to set over there. Oh, look. There's actually a tent down there, so I might see who it is. There goes, goes there, hi. What a night, though. What a night. Like the tiniest breath of wind, but out and out. Oh, I mean, in the distance there, we can just see the rays of sunshine just pouring through the clouds and then you can actually see the sea glimmering with the sun bouncing off it oh, wow just wow Well, just uh, walking off the summit. Last time I was here, I wasn't really paying attention if there's anywhere to pitch a tent, but all this is just no chance because it's just too rocky and at too much of an angle. <laughs> and we can't be uh, doing with that angle at dangle. End up slipping off. So I'm just gonna walk along a little bit further and just uh, have a scan about and just see what there is. There's always somewhere to pitch a tent. <laughs> he says, maybe not actually. This is it. It's exactly the place to pitch a tent. And someone's left a camera look. Oh dear. Hey Blue, this is the place. Hey, should we make this home for the night? I reckon. Right, let's get this backpack off you. Get on then, go on. There we go then, tent is up. And I like this tent. It is made by 3FUL, which is the same as the Lanshan 2 Pro. There is a link to both the tents in the description. Um, but this is the... That one. I'll put it there because I can't remember its name. <laughs> um, but uh, anyway, it's a really nice, simple tent to pitch. And it just looks well. I mean, you can see there, it just sits beautifully on the top of this uh, mountain. And uh, what I like about this tent is the fact that it's got two doors. It's totally symmetrical, so you can open up this side. So in the morning, I'm going to have a view out this way, 
taking in the uh, sunrise and then for this evening we are going to open up this side so if I just uh, unzip now and then we'll uh, get inside get ourselves set up properly yeah well happy with that really am What do you think, Blue? Hey? <laughs> go on then, get in. Get in. Lie down. There we go. You lay there. I'll lay here. It is home. Oh, I do love this though. Look at that. <sighs> Just, yeah, love it. Love it! Just get so excited to get into a tent. The drone lives in this bag and he knows it. Don't you, Blue? What's this? This dinner? <laughs> it don't taste very good, mate, I tell you. Alright, let's get this drone out and show this place off.
get this pumped up. I've got a trekker chair and I've got a beer and another beer. So those combined make for a good night with this lovely sunshine. Can't wait just to sit back and just relax and take it all in. I'm struggling a bit really because uh, a couple of days back, I don't know if you can see that, but <laughs> basically I put a hole in my thumb. I had my uh, drill at work and I was sort of uh, drilling in this screw. The screw sort of uh, flips sideways, the drill fires forward and I had one of those hex bits in and because it was spinning it literally just spun a hole into my thumb, hit the bone, went under the back of my nail and I'm not jogging. It really hurt. Normally I can take a bit of pain like that, but this one, I honestly just, I sat down and I thought, oh my God, this is just absolute pain. Anyway, it seems to be healing okay, but I am just being a bit careful with it, that's all. Especially doing these sorts of jobs. I'll numb the pain with a bit of alcohol. <laughs> ah dear. Don't numb pain with alcohol. It's not the way to do it. Numb the pain with getting outside and enjoying places like this. That's what you need to do. And then all of a sudden, that pain starts to go away. Yep, it's not a new concept. It's been out for 1.6 million years of humans, so there you go. <laughs> right, here we go then. Let's make a seat. Oh, tell you what, it's dropping chilly, isn't it, dog? Not that it bothers you, eh? All this thick coat on. <laughs> I have to add my coat, don't I? A pair of gloves. Let's start with big dog. Triple hazy. <laughs> 9.5% Sit back here, mate. <sighs> what an evening. Oh dear. It's a happy times in life, eh? Yeah, <laughs> oh, this is it. This is the point I just get, just, I don't know, like a really nice relaxing feeling because obviously I can just sit down now, chill out, have a drink and just really take it all in rather than messing about having to sort tents out and all that and fly drones. <laughs> yeah, this becomes my moment. Yeah, it's not a bad sunset that. And you can see we've got the sun and then underneath it the reflection of the sun which is bouncing off the sea. Just look at all these mountains though through all this. Just beautiful. Absolutely <laughs> stunning. It's like layers. Layers and layers of mountains. Yeah, great place for a camp, definitely. Not many places to pitch but there are a few. Oh yeah, what a place. Love it. Just look at the layering of those mountains over there. Absolutely fantastic place to sit and chill out. So yeah, I've been having a beer. I've met a subscriber called Rich who's just chilling out here with his brother at the cairn at the top. But um, yeah, what a lovely evening. It has just been just blissful, it really has. 
So yeah, just going to uh, crack open another beer and uh, have a little bit more chat and um, then I'll have to get myself some food I reckon but just too nice to go in yet I would say. Look at that though. Just incredible, absolutely incredible. Yep, get out and enjoy it. Well, what a splendid evening it has been. That sunset was just divine. Just watching um, that sort of drop down and just, it just allowed these sort of like mountains to sort of pop in the foreground. It was just beautiful, it really was. So yeah, just sort of been chilling out up at the uh, summit cairn with um, two top blokes, real top blokes. Um, a guy called Rich and his brother who, um, Rich is a subscriber and it has just been brilliant, it really has. So uh, yeah, just having a beer, a couple of tots of whiskey kindly donated by them and um, just a bit of chat, a bit of banter and yeah, just nice to meet people, it really is. Go on then Blue, go on. Good lad. So I'm gonna have another beer, chill out myself. So this is the double hazy, I've had a triple and I want double, so I'm working my way down called the reverse pyramid <laughs> oh, it tastes good and um, anyway it's time for me to make some dinner so what I brought is this is a sort of mint stew that I made a couple of days ago so I'm just gonna uh, pop this in the pan and then uh, eat this and because it's got everything in potato and the whole lot it's just a, a one pot which is good just need to uh, work out how I'm gonna Get it out of there and into the pan. Let's get a spoon out or something. Here we go, a spark. We'll just uh, de de escalate, <laughs> de mount. We will de something this into this. Can you tell I've had a beer? <laughs> Can't even think of words. Let's drop this in. Now all I'm going to do, nice and simply, heat that up, keep stirring it, and then I will have a very healthy-ish, tasty and filling meal. Let's get that on, eh? Bit of gas. Bit of flame. Let that calm down a second. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. Set myself a light. So this happens when you fill your own canisters. And pretty much all I've done is just overfill it, so there's a bit too much pressure there. I'll soon burn off and it'll be fine. <laughs> well, it's keeping warm at least, that's a good thing. Uh, yep. My eyebrow's gone. The tent's on, on the way next. There we go. There you go, rule number one with me and my kids, what I've always said to them is don't panic. I always said it to them, what's rule number one? And they would say, repeat that to me, don't panic. So there we go, don't panic, don't lose your eyebrows. turned off. Tell you what, it smells good, it really does. Let's have a look at this. <laughs> yeah, that is good. Mm. Wow, homemade stuff is so much better than all this uh, 
I don't know, camping food that you buy, the dehydrated rubbish. That is tasty. To be fair though, it's been sat in the fridge for two days, so everything that you uh, cook on the night and then eat doesn't taste as good as what it does after it's had a couple of days just to mature in the fridge. Uh, but the flavours in that, yeah, really good. And it's only simple. It's got carrot, broccoli, obviously, uh, green beans, onion, some beef mince and a couple of herbs and stuff that I'd sort of chuck in. And I've just sort of gravified it. It's a word. <laughs> but yeah, really tasty. Mm. There we go. Homemade food on a mountain with a beer. It's dry, it's calm. <sighs> yeah. <laughs> this is just the the uh pinnacle of life I would say. Nice and simple. Well, got to say, that was absolutely gorgeous. Home cooked food just trumps everything on a mountain, definitely. So, got a dirty pot now. Lou, come here. I'll get my dishwasher to clean it for me. Here you go, what's this? Oh, nice. Yeah, right, I'll give that to the dog. So if you hear some slurping and gargling, it's the dog in the background, not me. Easiest way to clean a plate though, just give it to the dog every time. What shall we talk about then, eh? Let's have a think. Well, I sort of mentioned earlier about having a beer to give you happiness <laughs> it is not the way to do it it really isn't you know coming up on a mountain like this um is i'd say positive escapism let's call it that and alcohol is not that and i know a lot of people do turn to alcohol for that on an evening just to sort of uh i don't know just numb some of the uh realities of life but you know for me you know it's nice to enjoy a beer but it's not about the beer it's about getting out like this in a tent on a mountain you know just away from just the sort of niggles that you get in life that's all and uh, there always are some and to be fair for me to come out today it took me some effort to get myself up and pack a bag and get myself out. And I think that's about 80, 90% of it. If you can make the decision to get yourself outside and then get your bag packed, the rest of it's easy. You know, like coming up onto a mountain, doesn't matter what the weather is, it could be, you know, absolutely persisting it down windy whatever the hardest part is actually getting out the door so you know put the effort in to get that bit done and the rest of it is just pretty much plain sailing i'd say so yeah and you know i'm here now i'm sat here just chilling out yeah i've had a beer and you know it adds to the just the nice sort of uh flavor of the evening i would say just chilling out you know, meeting some nice people, having a beer to just, I don't know, relax back with, that's all. So yeah, positive escapism, that's what it is. Getting outside and just putting all your life woes just behind you for a while and forgetting about them. And I think it's a, a really endearing and just positive it's positive it's positive for mindset and just 
keeping you in a, a happy place, that's all. So, yeah, definitely. And the thing is, when he's sat at home, it's like, you know, there's so many people who do sit at home and sort of struggle to do things, get outside and just enjoy life. And, you know, when he's sat in like a flat or a depressed sort of state, you know, I sort of always explain it as being like sat in a puddle. And it's not a comfortable place to be. And you want to get out of that puddle, but it's almost like you just sit there and that's it. You're just in that puddle. So, you know, like... <laughs> I mean, I'm all about positivity and, you know, living a happy life, but, you know, get out and wash some of that away. Wash it away with some rain. Freeze some of it away in some really cold conditions. You know, blow it away in some wild winds. Yeah. Just get out again. Positive escapism. That's what it is. It really is. And uh, I'd advise anybody to get out and just... Just allow your senses to be stimulated by all this and it does make you happy absolutely no doubt about it it makes you happy yep and i say it a lot but it's a good life it really is you just have to make those good life choices to keep you in that nice frame of mind where you know Birds are singing <laughs> and all that. Ah, oh dear. Anyway. Anyway, anyway, anyway. Enough of that drunken spiel. I will uh, carry on, sip this beer, take in the last sort of uh, part of this evening, and then uh, I'll be getting myself ready for bed. Yep, and tomorrow is a new day. I have not seen tomorrow. I don't know what it's going to bring. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know where I'm going to go. And that is a nice feeling to have. It really is. Anyway, we'll see thee in the morning. Cheers, guys. Morning flowers. Well, this is not a bad morning at all to wake up to. I love being able to just open this front up, which has been open since four o'clock in the morning. And I've just uh, slowly watched the light just rise up. And it's really nice now, actually, because I'll just show you. The sun is just bouncing off a little lake in the background there. What a place though. I think Blue's around there chilling out. And then the summit. And just up there. What a morning though. It is lovely just to be able to breathe. Take all this in. I had a cup of tea and a flapjack. That's what I need just to get me started. I carried two litres of water up with me and I've not had any yet. I do have another little bottle as well though. I've had that. Oh, I've got my trousers. Pop that on there. New Thirsty Blue, I'll get you a drink in a minute. Ah, uh, not that one. <laughs> Let's get this lit first. That's for me, and then this one blue, you can have.
go, Matt. Tea is made. For breakfast, I've got a flapjack, which is a protein based flapjack, so it's uh, going to fill me up a bit more. Uh, this one is from a sports company called CNP. Quite nice, and to go with that, a bit of fruit, bananas and apples. So, yeah, that is our breakfast and cup of tea. So, let's go sit somewhere nice and enjoy it. What a morning, eh? Just this beautiful, hazy sunshine. And I'm getting a bit of the heat off the sun directly onto me, but there is a really cold breeze just uh, coming in from behind here. And it's just one of those places and one of those moments and it's just like you don't want to leave it. I don't actually want to pack up and go. I want to stay here and just have this. Because <laughs> you just don't get a happier place. This this is it. This is the happiest place you can be. For me, anyway. <sighs> yeah. Anyway. Life goes on and we have to uh, move on to the next one. So, time to get this tent packed up. And I've got to say, I really do like this tent. You know, budget friendly. Big space inside and you know it accommodates me and the dog fine two doors so you know opening up this morning just getting this oh, just perfect really yes not a bad shout there is a link in the description to the tent so just have a, a look at that well procrastinating <laughs> I just want to stay obviously but Let's do it. Let's get packed away. Hey, Blue. <laughs> Shall we go? <laughs> yeah. On to the next one. Well, there we go. All packed up, ready to go. What a place it is. Really nice place to put a tent, but only in good weather. If there's any wind whatsoever, I mean... The wind that had come up here and over the top, it would literally push you off this mountain and you'd be ending up down in this uh, tarn in the bottom. But not bad for a nice calm night like I've just had. Anyway, we are gonna move on to greener pastures and probably do a bit more exploring. I'll go have a look and see what else we can find. Cause uh, <laughs> it's an awesome place here, it really is. So yes, let's get ourselves off back down this mountain. Just glorious though. Oh, always a happy man. Oh yeah, <laughs> I've forgotten the dog. Here he comes. Good lad. Good boy. Go on then, get on. Well, there we are, back at the highest point. The summit cairn just behind me. And we're gonna descend down this path again. And then uh, hopefully find some more interesting things to have a look at.
Can you tell this is a slate mine? <laughs> wow. <laughs> Look at all that, just expansive slate just piled up. It looks actually like down there there might be a little uh, old sort of way in. Could be wrong. But always worth exploring, eh? That was a possibility. Let's have a look. Let's get up and round here. Ah. <laughs> it's always exciting just uh, coming to find places like this. It looks like it's all caved in. A few uh, sheep skulls. Yeah, it's just all caved in as this. Oh. Well, that's been here a few years. Really perished. You know that blue? Well, here at the next part of the mine. Look at all this old workings. See, like the leave no trace thing. When it comes to, you know, this sort of industry that sort of helped humans sort of develop over the last, well, 800 years since the mines have been sort of going. But, you know, I don't mind that. It means something. But when it's a Coke can <laughs> or McDonald's wrapper, it is just, uh, yeah, not what we should be leaving, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, slight difference in, in people nowadays compared. I love all these places, it's just so interesting. You know, look at that old tank. And straight away, things like that, I'm designing in my head what I can use that for. And I wonder whether, you know, it could be some sort of sleeping pod. Might be a bit tight. <laughs> yeah, all the old sort of uh, rail tracks that run into the mountain. And if you can see, this one just runs off the end of the uh, slag heap there, which means they'd have been dumping just to get rid of all the stuff out of here. But there's uh, an opening here, so let's get in and have a look, eh? Let's have a look. Come on, boot. Yeah, this is cool. Well, you can feel the cold air as we sort of step through at this point. And then straight away, when it's dark, and I need to get my head torch out. get into here. Get really excited at this point. Proper kid. <laughs> right, let's uh, get this light on. Oh wow, this straightaway is just gonna be epic. Blue, come on, we're gonna go into here. Let's get this light on as bright as it can go. Oh, brilliant, just look down there. Wow, amazing. Right, let's see how far this rail track goes. It sort of branches off onto different caverns. It's a massive, hell, it's massive up there. Wow. 
We've got all these sort of support columns that are just sort of built in the middle just to stop the ceiling from caving in. Jeez, this goes back a long way. Blue, come on. Come on. Good boy. Try not to shine the torch straight in his eyes. I mean, look up there, just amazing. I don't know what you can see with this torch, but. Wow, this place is incredible. Just keeps going on and on. And the scale of this place, I mean, it is just immense all the way around. <laughs> yes. Oh, this is where, I don't know which way to go. I've got one track going that way and one that way. Let's go along this one. Might get lost in here. Look at this. Wow. That's a fair old contraption. And if you look in here, you can just see, look where it's been greased. And it's still looking quite smooth and nice is that. No corrosion on it to say it's been here <laughs> a good while, like. All right, let's keep going. Keep going. I mean, I'm a good, well, at least a hundred meters in now. Now, just a section here that's a little bit lower but um, obviously this will be some sort of support section I would have thought just to uh, make sure that everything's sort of staying up above your head but, I mean just look we've got uh, just items like that just lying about and I love old rusty junk that has a history because it just looks cool you know I'd happily have these as features in my home but they are to stay here. Features of old industry. This is just massive. Look up that ceiling there. I don't know how well you've got to see, but... What a place. Blue's just chilling there. Unfazed. And the echo in here is... Like the sound, the acoustics is amazing. Ooh. Wow, <laughs> what a place. Well, I think this might be the end of the road. Look at this, I've got an old file. And those make pretty good knives. If you wanna hammer that around on a forge for a few hours, Pop her back. Yeah, look here. You can see. That's where they've sort of drilled into the rock. Different sort of points. And that just allows them to peel off a massive section. Well, as calming as it is in here, I wouldn't want to work here all the time. <laughs> No chance, it is a little bit dark, wet and gloomy and all done by lantern back in the day. Amazing really. And they'd have probably had like some sort of horse system dragging the carts out. Excellent place. 
it really is not a place to uh, only have one torch with you though just in case that went off because you <laughs> struggled to find your way out I think but it's a, a long way and there's a few different passages to go down so ah dear yep let's head out Yeah, I'm just walking back out and I'll tell you what, it's a lot further in than what I thought. It is taking quite a while. Let's get sidetracked looking at stuff, that's all. <laughs> get on them blue one. Cool. He's got night vision, luckier than me. Anyway, we are coming back to the entrance now. See a little bit of light in the distance. Well that one was pretty damn cool. So let's go have a look for the next one now. A, <laughs> there are quite a good few around here that you can check out so <laughs> I just smiling at that. I just love it, absolutely love it. So we'll head down here around the corner because looking at it there there's some more tracks which obviously lead to something. Let's go over. But it's a cracking day. Cracking day. Just love it. I love it, love it, love it. Right, what have we got here then? A little bit of an opening. We'll climb down and have a look. You can see some of the old little buildings around and about that are still just about standing. So at the entrance you can see down on the floor here there's a lot of water and I ain't got waterproof boots on. But let's see what we can do. I'll tell you what, let's make this easier. I'm going to ditch my backpack and then we can get in there. rocks to stand on just to keep you out of the water. Let's follow the railroad again. When you uh, shine the torch up and around, you can't actually see that far, purely because uh, there's so much sort of moisture in the air and all those uh, water particles are catching the light of the torch and it's a bit like driving through fog, I guess. <laughs> Come in, kids. It goes a long way, this one. This is actually bigger than the other. Oh, more excitement. Wow, well it's a bigger cabin than the last one I'd say but it doesn't go as far. I'm probably, actually I'm probably 100 metres in I'd say but see the dog just shining up coming this way. Just such a nice place to be underground. This feels quite safe, even though it's a bit wet and miserable. <laughs> Tell you what, I can't imagine working in a place like this. It would be just hard. You know, that's when men were men. 
It was so soft nowadays. And if we have to go back to uh, pre-technological times and start having to work again, human, humans will just die off. <laughs> they really will. They're just useless now. We'd have to uh, be looking at the tribes of the world to try to learn again how to survive. There we go back out following the track to the end. So these uh, tracks used to be used for the carts which were just bringing out all this slag and just basically dumping it off the end. So we get to the end of the track there and then that's it all just sort of shoved off and they'd keep everything as flat as possible just so they didn't have to use much effort or energy to uh, pull or push the carts. And I'm pretty sure that he used some sort of animal to pull it. Horses. Because they wouldn't rely just on human power, I don't think. I mean, they were tough, but they weren't stupid. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, we need to really get ourselves back off this mountain. And on to the next one. <laughs> oh dear, just love it. So there we go, that is the old man of Coniston. There's a constant flow of people walking up now, so I've sort of come to the side just to hide away, because I actually do not like talking in front of people on camera. Um, I'm a confident lad in most ways, but when it comes to, uh, you know, just being on stage or performing or something like that, there's just no chance, I don't like it at all. So yeah, I'm, I'm slowly getting better at the video sort of side of things, I would say. Anyway, what an adventure, you know, just brilliant to get up there in weather like this, have those views and just appreciate everything that's around. Um, you know, you get to see for miles from the top there, all the way around to the sea, all the other mountain ranges of the Lake District. So definitely worth a visit. And um, because there's places to explore, it's kind of cool to bring the kids. I'm not saying do the dangerous stuff, but you know, kids just love that. So uh, yeah. Anyway, if you have enjoyed the video, let's give it some of them. And um, also, if you want to contribute towards the channel, there is Buy Me A Coffee, there is the Patreon as well, which you can come and join that community. And uh, oh, I've got merch, look at this, merch as well. So check that out as well. There's links in the description for everything going and obviously like my tents and other equipment that I use. So just to have a check of all that. So yes, and also I'll tell you what, tell your friends, you know, I want this channel to keep growing and growing and growing, spreading that sort of uh, positivity to other people. So if, if you feel that someone else, a friend, a colleague uh, might benefit from this channel, then just uh, tell them, tell them about it, get them to subscribe and watch some of these videos. So hopefully I can help and inspire more people out in life. Anyway, from me, from the beautiful blue, we'll see you another time. Take care. <laughs>